Skopje, capital of Macedonia and located in the valley of the Vardar River, with a dramatic history that spans many thousands of years. It forms the junction of two trading routes in Southeast Europe that unites both Western and Eastern civilization. A stone bridge separates the Muslim section from the Christian Orthodox section. This city of religion and trade is surrounded by much natural beauty. Kassia, the old town, and also known as the lower town north of the river, has witnessed several battles, earthquakes and floods. The legacy of Ottoman times is all around. One of the city's best preserved mosques is the Ghazi Aziza Bedjamia. In the 17th century, it's believed there were up to 120 mosques in Skopje. This mosque with a double dome once served as a monastery for an order of dervishes and also contained one of the city's first libraries. Ottoman rule began in 1392 and lasted for 520 years. The city became known as Uskub. The Ottomans introduced the Islam religion and erected mosques, enclosed bazaars and clock towers. The interior architecture of the mosque is quite modest, although the walls and both domes are decorated with artistic ornaments. In an Islamic house of God, the faithful gather five times a day for prayer. And on Friday, there's a divine service that includes a sermon. Several shining glass chandeliers hang down from the ceiling and walls and carpets decorate the large prayer hall in which the Hodja reads from the Quran. The old bazaar is an important meeting place. Some of the streets of the market are roofed. Today, goods are traded here, but in former times, some of them were also made here too. The goods were produced on all floors. But one thing remains the same. The tiny shops are laid out according to the goods they sell. There is also an alley of goldsmiths, a popular area. Fresh fruit and vegetables are much in demand and the merchants proudly present their goods according to Ottoman tradition, a feast for the eye. A visit to the market is always a fascinating adventure. But when the Muetzin calls for prayer, the people stop what they're doing and begin to pray. The male faithful line up side by side and kneel down to praise God and the Prophet. Beyond the bazaar is the splendid al Diamia, also known as the Colourful Mosque. It's surrounded by a stone wall and a cemetery. Within one of the tombs lies the remains of city treasurer Ishag Beg.
The interior contains little decoration, as in 1689 almost everything was destroyed by fire. The colourful tiles on the external façade were badly damaged. However, the mosque survived and is today visited by the faithful. Caravanserais, baths and mosques were very important in Ottoman times and were always to be found together. Both travellers and traders required accommodation as well as storage rooms, baths and places of prayer. Kursumlian was so named because its original roof was a plumbic dome known as Kursum in Turkish. Later it was removed. Of the city's three caravanserais, Karomslian is the most impressive. Arcades on two levels frame an inner courtyard and fountain. The lower rooms were used as storage rooms for goods and animals, and in the upper rooms, travellers were accommodated. As protection from both cold and invasion, there were few windows. Today, the caravanserai is used as a lapidarium for the neighbouring National Museum. Roman and Hellenistic artefacts are exhibited in the atrium. The city's early history is also apparent. In around 500 BC, the first settlement originated here, on the edge of the Illyrian realm. As the Roman Empire expanded eastwards, the settlement was named Scupi, and following the division of the realm, it became part of Byzantine territory. Later, Scupi was appointed by the Romans as a seat of local government for the district of Dadania. Between the mosques is the last surviving monastery in the center of Skopje, Sveti Spas, with a fine church and a wooden bell tower. Both monastery and church were built before the time of the Ottomans and eventually they had to be reduced in size because no other religious building was allowed to be larger than a mosque. In the monastery's courtyard, a stone sarcophagus contains the remains of revolution leader Gorce Delchev. It contains only his body as his head was exhibited on the city's famous stone bridge following his execution. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the church was refurbished Three of the country's most famous woodcarvers worked for six years on its splendid interior. The work on the 10 meter wide and 6 meter high icon is thought to have been one of the greatest achievements of that time. A unique work of art. Artistically carved out of the wood of a walnut tree, in two rows adorned with gold, it features scenes of both the New and Old Testaments. Makaria Frikovsky and his brothers Marko and Peter Filipkovsky worked every day on this masterpiece.
typical of that time is that in addition to biblical scenes, it also features scenes of everyday life. In an adjoining museum, images on the theme of freedom fighting are exhibited. Godri Delchev, along with 74 followers, was overrun by 400 Ottoman soldiers. A popular destination for the people of Skopje is the Matka Valley, a deep canyon that contains the Treska River that was dammed to become a lake. Ragged mountain peaks frame the river valley, and deep down are numerous old churches and caves hidden within the rock. This sheltered natural habitat is good for bathing, climbing, hiking, fishing, and boat trips. Viewed from the boat, the river valley looks even more immense, more primeval, and also more romantic. A natural paradise close to the city. Once hardly anyone visited this wild landscape because there was little to do. Today, visitors love to penetrate deep into the canyon by boat to as far as a landing stage. A hole in a rock wall leads to a famous natural wonder that was nominated for the new Seven Wonders. The cave system of Vrelo it contains two caves, one above the water level and one below, plus a small lake. Exploration of the cave system is still underway, but it's estimated that it's more than 500 meters deep. There are stalagmites up to a height of three meters here in what is possibly Europe's deepest underwater cave. After we've seen as much as we can, we return by boat to visit the canyon's monasteries. Near the village of Glumovo is the Bogorodice Monastery, founded during the 14th century and active again today, with several monks. The medieval frescoes on the walls and ceilings are well preserved after 500 years. This is due to the special painting method of that time. Fresco means fresh. The colors were slowly applied to the wet plaster. The Sveti Nikola Sizevsky Church is situated on a plateau high above the Treska River and surrounded by a small fruit garden and base woods. This old church was once part of a monastery of the same name. No details exist of its origins, but it was first recorded in the 17th century. During the 18th century, both church and monastery were destroyed. 
and in the 19th century only the church was rebuilt. The older frescoes were subsequently repainted. Narrative motifs characterize the painting method of the 17th century. The small rock plateau of Sveti Andreja near Matka was originally situated about 20 meters above the river. Its frescoes date back to the 15th century. Particularly beautiful are the scenes from the Last Supper, removal from the cross, and Jesus on the Mount of Olives. The church was built in around 1400 AD by Andrea, brother of legendary King Marco. And 150 years later, it was extended. Around Skopje are several monasteries, but the most popular is situated in the small village of Nerezi. The Sveti Pentaliamen Monastery is famous for its frescoes that date back to the 12th century and adorn the church. They're in the style of late Italian Renaissance. The monastery church is only used for special occasions such as festivals and weddings. The monastery buildings have been transformed into an hotel. Here, cultural treasures have been saved for modern times. Back in Skopje, we visit the newly built Upper Town, the modern district of this Macedonian metropolis. Most of the government offices, shopping centers and modern hotels are to be found in the southern part of the city. The train station clock is a reminder of the devastating earthquake that last occurred in the city. A simple monument of Mother Teresa stands in front of her house that, although modern, is also very much in Macedonian style. The world-famous Catholic nun was born in 1910 in Skopje. Her whole life was dedicated to the aid of the poorest of the poor. She grew up in a wealthy Albanian family. The missionary of grace and charity died in 1997 in Calcutta. The historic stone bridge of Gemeni Most spans the river Vada and unites two city districts and also the Muslim world with that of the Christian Orthodox. The massive 214 meter long stone bridge was built in the late 15th century under the rule of Sultan Mehmed II, the Conqueror. In Ottoman times, the bridge was a place of execution where rebels were executed in public. Then the city grew rapidly and people also settled outside the city walls. So a bridge to the new city quarter became necessary. Next to the stone bridge lies the pride of Skopje. 
the Stone Bridge Hotel, featuring unique architecture and abundant luxury. Here, the past meets with the present. There's also a square and modern shopping streets. Here, the city shows its international face. Next, we return to the Muslim Old Town, to the largest hammam in the Balkans. The Daoud Pashin Hammam was built in the 15th century. It's a typical bathhouse that dates back to the time of Turkish rule. This splendid masterpiece of Ottoman architecture was built at the command of Vizier Daud Pasha for his large harem. Today, the National Gallery is accommodated here. It features mainly contemporary works of art. Only a few of its exhibits date back to the 13th century. Beneath 13 cupolas, this extraordinary building has survived right up to the present day. Where today works of art are exhibited, in former times there were once various bathing rooms, divided between men and women, with hot steam and cold water. Both large domed rooms were used as changing rooms and each contained a central fountain. An atmospheric place indeed. The Turkish steam bath unites the traditional steam bath with the ritual of washing. Kala, an Ottoman fortress, surveys Skopje and the Vardar Valley. Prehistoric settlements that date back to 3500 BC were discovered on this hill. The Illyrians built the first fortress here, and next it was used by the Dardanians, and finally by Sar Samul, who reigned the country from here. Earthquakes frequently destroyed the city's fortress, in 518 AD the first time, and in 1963 the complex that had been rebuilt under Justinian rule. But with international aid, the city was eventually reconstructed. Nightlife flourishes here, especially in the southern part of the city. Skopje is once again a city of various cultures. NATO and other international organizations are represented here, strategically placed in what is a sensitive part of the world. The city's people try to forget the last flood and the horrendous earthquake of the 26th of July 1963. They take pride in the many monuments that feature the famous people who have conquered, defended and rebuilt the city. They have all made their mark in the city's architecture, culture and people. The city has survived and its people have retained their courage. Skopje has become a symbol of fraternity and solidarity, a prospering city at the southeastern end of the world. <laughs>